Hey, Scott Rice is already here. I was just reading an email with your name on it regarding another micro brand watch being sent in. So, kind of cool that you're here. Hey, Bobby Legs is here. Just opened a box you sent me as well. Got the notice back in. AZ Clayton chiming in. And you told me to take the night off. Dan is here, 3D Buckeye. People will start chiming in, I'm sure. I'll wait till enough people are here before we can talk about some micro, brand, micro brands. Jason from Aruba is here. Ray's chiming in. Let's see, John T. Boss. Yeah, here we go. A bunch of people. Nathan, Tennessee Mike is checking in. My buddy Calico Basin. Craig G is here. Let's see, Joe. My number one troll killer, Dane, is here. Floridian's checking in. Peter C. Tyler, Kevin S is here, Naman is here, Ray, Escape Man on Watch, Ken Spear, Casey, everybody's chiming in. We're the Orange Monster today, Monster Monday. Benjamin, you're welcome. I'm that's nice that you're enjoying the clockwork strap for the Seiko SKX. I almost need to make another video on that, I think. Mark is here because I've shown this watch because a lot of times I'll compare the SKX to other watches. And inevitably, somebody in the comment section will ask, what was that strap? So I almost, and I already have a video on the clockwork strap. I almost need to make like another video or something just to keep it fresh, but there it is, Clockwork Republic. And extremely comfortable strap on the SKX. Game changer strap, like that good. And Dane, you know what? I have I was just thinking about that. I have all of these micro brands here. And I don't have a Zelos here because I just sent it over to you. The one Zelos I actually had, I actually just sent to you. So I don't have that on the table. But I have a bunch more micro brands. I just don't have them here. Not very many of these are actually running. I should probably get some of these running. I have to find out what movement is in this. I'm not even sure. Thanks for the offer, Dane. Hopefully my relationship with Zelos, wow, that is a very, that's a nice tight crown. Hopefully my relationship with Zelos will um, continue. It's not a Seiko movement. I like the handset on this. Somebody asked about the mustard yellow one. This is a RZE Endeavor. Full titanium watch. Excellent colorway. Really cool applied indices. Yes, Dane, thank you for explaining to me how to pronounce Zelos. But in my defense, I was misinformed by actual Zelos uh, representatives at a watch show. They told me it was Zelos. So, Craig, no, I don't. Um, I don't have any RZE. And actually, I mean, really, most of these watches on the table are actually not mine. 
And this is, I think, all of the micro brand I have in the watch room right now. Not gonna go through and set them or anything, but. Just wanted to get a few of them running while we're looking at them, right? About time is here. Thanks, Karan, for joining us. So earlier today, I don't watch a ton of watch-related YouTube videos, to be honest with you. I'll kind of go by, like, which ones interest me. I don't, like, just blanket watch all of the ones I subscribe to. But earlier today, there was a, maybe you guys subscribe, maybe you don't, but there's a YouTuber, watch YouTuber by the name of Peter Kotsa, Kotsa, K-O-T-S-A, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. He has just over 21,000 subscribers, and then he's a professional photographer, actually. He does very good videos. I believe he's in Australia. Costa? Well, I'm looking at his... I know, Hunter, you say Costa, but like on his, is that how you say it? Because I'm looking at his page right now and it's Peter K-O-T-S-A, so Katza. Yeah. And he does very good videos and he put out a video today and it was simply titled, Should We Collect Micro Brand Watches? Question mark. So... I think he had some amazing points and I 100% agreed with him and I could probably make my own video with the exact same title and maybe go even further um, not to like um, do a better question you know better question and answer on that but more so just my input on the scenario so because I've handled so many micro brands that I mean, the answer for me, if you were to ask me, or if I were to give other people advice, you know, should I buy this micro brand? The, the answer is uh, yes. It's, it's pretty easy uh, with some caution. You definitely need to use some caution. There are some amazing brands out there. This one right here, for example, pretty much all of the notice watches are just very well done. 100% very well done. So, and their bracelets are really good. Like here it is, the uh, Retrospect. I think this might even be like the third one or something. I'm not even sure. Third or fourth, heck, I don't even know. And then you have this uh, Sector Dial Pilot style watch here or something. They have quite a few different watches. And they have some for very affordable prices for the specs they give. Now, most of them use Seiko movements. Um, I don't know if they use any other movements, but there's some, there's all different levels in the micro brand game. Whatever price point you want to go, whatever kind of finishes you want to go with, uh, case materials. Uh, it's just, they're not held within the confines that some of the bigger brands where they have to deal with, you know, committees and like restrictive budgets and all of that other stuff. Like they can... It's, I think it's best to gravitate towards micro brands that were originated by enthusiasts. I think you're, you're going to have a better um, experience if you can find the micro brands that are enthusiast based rather than, you know, trying to be an income based one. I, obviously, they all need to make some sort of money because they have to keep their overhead taken care of. But. You know, you're going to get sapphire crystals, you're going to get ceramic bezel inserts, you're going to get, you know, affordable, serviceable movements, you're going to get interesting colorways, case designs, unique designs. Um, you know, what else are you going to get that are not necessarily good things? You might get some quality control issues, you might get some shipping delays, you might get, uh, yeah, you know, and the really good ones will work with you and get those taken care of. I think I got a few running there. What else? I want to get this one. Out. This one's actually hand wound too. K 
Kevin says, micros never seem to last, meaning that, um, I think what Kevin is saying is that usually people end up selling their micro. I don't know what the percentage is. I don't know that everybody that collects micro brands necessarily sells them. I suspect there's some serious micro brand collectors out there, like big time. And they might narrow it down to where they really focus on a few different brands. Like I guarantee you there's guys out there that probably have like all of the notice watches and probably talk to the owners on a semi-regular basis. Uh, much like, you know, how Dane collects Zelos watches. Like he's owned or handled most of the models, if not all of the models that have been out. He doesn't currently own all of them. He has his favorites, but yeah, I think I think you're right. I think Josh uh, Horology and Insanity was it? Is that what it's called? Something like that. Is uh, big time into micro. Yeah, Zelos is definitely yeah Horology and Insanity. So Zelos is definitely cream of the crop when it comes to. Um, that fine line where you have like diminishing returns. Like I don't think you can get more watch for the exact same money. And if you spend a lot more than that, like you might not get even the same quality for it. So you hit that diminishing return mark pretty, pretty hard with notice with a lot of their watches. Let's see, I'll get this white dialed one going. I'll get a few of these things going here. Do like these white tiles. JJ says his sixth Zelos is on the way. I like this one has the um, the date wheels like inside there, so you can see it's on twenty one. So it should go over to. Boom. 22. I like that. I have not seen that on another micro brand. Uh, let's see. I could go there. Let's get a Borealis going. So Kevin says, yeah, Kevin's got a good point. He says that he would rather have one Omega Seamaster Professional 300 rather than six or eight micro brands. So, and that's, you know, that's the big dilemma I think that a lot of people end up facing is, you know, if you were to add up, um, not used prices, but like if you were to add up what you would have paid for these, well, you know, even if you would have bought them secondhand, firsthand or secondhand, if you were to add these up, you got two probably really big different numbers because they usually do take a hit but you know you could have not bought these and not enjoyed them and experienced them and played with them and not lost money on them potentially and just bought you know a more luxury type watch or something but that's just two different ways of collecting so that's an argument that I'm not going to try to rebuttal because if you if your mind is already thinking that way, or I would rather have this versus all of this, well, then that's your way to buy a watch. That's what you should do, you know. Um, but I think, I don't know what the percentage, but there's a lot of people out there that would rather buy and experience a bunch of different watches along the way and potentially maybe end up in a luxury watch, maybe not. Variety is the spice of life. Design says also micro brands easier to flip. Um, yes, actually, you know, a lot of people don't really talk about that. But because the reality is when you're talking about the affordable micro brands, 
you are talking about just that, the affordable range. So when you have, I don't, I don't even know the price ranges on some of these, but say when you have, um, I don't want to pick on notice too much, but say you have a notice retrospect, re retrospect, great watch, affordable in its own right, you know, buying a new, but when you talk secondhand, uh, you're going to take a hit on it, right? So that's bad for the, the first buyer to take that depreciation on it. Good for the next buyer, potentially if they're an end user as well. But regardless, once you swallow that pill and realize that you're going to take that depreciation on it, when you go to sell it, it's a lot easier to sell like a two to three to $400 watch than it is to sell a watch for, you know, something like this, where if you bought it new or used or whatever the deal is, you're going to take a hit on this as well. And it's, it's going to be harder to sell because for a ton of different reasons. One, you probably have a smaller market that are, that are buying the two, three thousand dollar watch than you do the two or three hundred dollar watch. And then you also have the, the skeptics where they want evidence proof that it's authentic and all this other stuff. Is it, you know, running good? Is it, what kind of condition is it? It has to be perfect, all that other stuff, right? Whereas when you're selling like a $200 watch, people are going to be a little more forgiving of that. And you're not going to find a non-authentic notice out there as far as I know yet. Excellent bezel action on this. Yeah, notice quality control is awesome. And I really love their bracelets. Their H-Link bracelets are nice. Yeah, design, you should definitely check out a notice. See, Hunter saying, Rob, what happened to your Dorenzo review? Did you not get the DRZ04 in white? Um, I don't know. Is that their new new one or is that their last one? I really don't know. All right, I got too many comments here. Jason wants to know, what is the highest spec to notice? I don't know. I wouldn't focus too much on that. It depends on your wrist size too. I think, you know, this guy right here is going to probably fit a little bit smaller wrist. Whereas the retrospect I actually like, I think that I like the size of it, but there's uh, there they have quite the, the range. I would recommend reaching out to the owners and, and talk to them a little bit. Hunter the Mundial. Um, the video should still be up. I don't, I did a video on it. I don't think I took it down. So I don't have the watch anymore, though. JJ, do I still have the Omega 300? No, Bruce has that. Bruce Williams has that now. Peter says Borealis doesn't really have their own watch. Uh, they do, but they don't usually sell as well as their um, familiar watches, let's just say. They do have their own designs, 100%. The Cascais... I got a couple of these other ones behind me that I didn't get out, but. Is Doxa a micro brand? No. No, they act like one and they run it like one, but they they aren't. They need to pull their head out of their butts and, and actually do better, but. Detroit's trying to get Dane to be his uh, tour guide or something down there. Microbrand is affordable and has a variety of styles. Yep, 100%. Just what Peter just said. I don't really know if Spinnaker can be really a microbrand anymore. I don't. I don't think I classify Spinnaker. Let's get the Spinnakers out of here. I, I don't really classify Spinnaker as a micro brand in the sense that a lot of these guys are, where they're definitely um, much smaller and, you know, they put out like one watch model at a time sort of thing. So...
uh, Kevin asks, is Chris Ward or Monta a micro brand? I would say Chris, For Chris Ward is no not a micro. They're definitely a legitimate watch company. Monta is like kind of like the boutique brand. They're not full on like legitimate either. I don't know, but I had to have the purple G-Shock sitting in there too. Like I just, there was really no purple up here. So I, I mean, how often do you have like a purple G-Shock? So you just got to have that like hanging out. Helios, yeah, there's a bunch of them I don't have here for sure. Um, oh, I did catch this. Detroit Spartan said Columbia is a must. So he's talking, about, I I still haven't went to that restaurant. The next time I go down there, 100% Detroit, I am, I'm definitely going to Columbia. I walked by it, drove by it or whatever, I don't know, a dozen times. And each time the place was packed and it looked like it was hopping and it looked like it was an awesome restaurant. I don't for some reason, it just never went, and I'm, I'm going next time to that one for sure. That's at St. Armand's uh, Square, or whatever they call it, on, uh, I don't know, was that Lido or something? I can't remember. Like, I can get around that area, but I don't know what exactly. Kyler with the $5 Super Chat, he says, any thoughts on the new Seiko Solar chronograph i think it looks awesome i think i think pretty much most of the new seiko watches look great and hopefully they oh dang it's circle yeah because i guess it is a circle i don't know saint armin circle square whatever um yeah the the new seikos are all awesome so here is, I actually just did the unboxing for this. Somebody asked what these chronographs are. I have four of them. I got the black, the white, the blue. I think I have all the colorways. Uh, I even have a gray dial over here. So, but I like the white. And it's paired up with this orange strap, archer strap. So this is MTK. And I believe it has a Seiko Mecha Quartz in it. It does not have a running second, but it does have, you know, the chronograph. And this is a, a new watch that John over at the watch gauge is going to be carrying. Just a good, clean overall design. Probably 42 by 50 right in there. Oversized crown, 100 meter water resist, full metal tachometer around the edge. Just cool looking watch. I'm going to try some of these on. Let's see, I don't... Kevin has a keeper. Get the key line pie. You guys are talking Florida here. Yeah, this is watch chat or food chat. They got, they got Florida and cuisine on their minds, man. Detroit's taking a little trip, so he's trying to get up on all the spots. I know what spots I like to go to down there, but I'm not going to share them here. This Heinrich actually looks amazing. It's a little weird to me to not see more of a balance on the second hand other than that. I love the bracelet, the case, the knurling on the bezel and on the crown. Yeah, Detroit's flexing pretty hard with his new blue sky dweller. Bobby Legs is selling his green dial, Heinrich. What is this one with the sky blue dial? This is the second hour watch company, Gin Clear Diver. And from what I understand, this pastel blue is actually slightly rare. It's hard to get. How heavy is this one? 
Um, I don't know. It's not like overly heavy. Man, it feels and wears good on wrist. I'll tell you that. The other thing I've noticed, noticed, not notice, um, like you can kind of tell that like these two watches, I guarantee you these two watches are made in the same place. You can kind of tell when you just handle them, the bracelets are very similar. I bet you I could swap out the, the links and they would probably fit. Yes, they spec'd out different clasp and the watch head and everything is custom to their spec and the dials and all that stuff. But there's just, they're too familiar. There's too many things that are like subtle, familiar bits. So I guarantee you that second hour and the notice ones are coming out of the same factory. They went with a single domed crystal on this one. Yeah, this pastel blue is really fun. Well, Kevin, I don't, they're not parts bins watches. Um, you know, when they have, when there's a really good H-Link bracelet and that's what you want on your watch, why would you reinvent it? You know, the, the really good H-Link bracelet already exists. It has a nice taper. It has a nice fold over. Then you spec out whatever clasp you want. The Notice one is super easy and nice to use, but it only has three micro adjusts. This one's going to have six. Most people are going to want that more micro adjust, especially with an H-Link. So those are things you spec out. You know, is that case back? Is this case? Is this bezel? Are those parts bins? No, those were made for second hour. So when you get down to the, the main bits of it, you're not going to see another watch that has this exact case, bezel, um, I mean, the bezel insert is for them. The dial is definitely them. It's not like I could call up the, the manufacturer that makes these and spec out the exact same watch. They probably have some sort of um, agreement that they won't do that. Maybe they don't, but I suspect they do. So, you know, signed crowns, you know, that's unique. You're not going to find that crown. It's not like that was, you know, in their parts bin. That's second hour didn't go like, well, what? Sign crowns do you have and dials do you have? You know, it's like, these are specced out. They're not just straight up parts bins watches. Gary says, at what point is a microbrand no longer considered a microbrand anymore? Um... I'm sure that can be defined. You guys want to cover that in the comments. Um, TV commercial, yeah, I, I, TV commercial is a waste. I don't know why somebody would make a TV commercial. Yeah, I think when you're when you're primarily starting to be sold in, well, I wouldn't even say sold in other stores because Christopher Ward isn't sold in other stores. They do all their online sales. I don't know, they have to like cross over a threshold or something. Yeah, Peter, who watches TV anymore? Not I. Let's see. Kind of want to try this one on. When they have a brick and mortar. But even some of the ones that we say that aren't like... I don't know that, does Christopher Ward have like a, a legitimate brick and mortar? The taper on this bracelet is crazy. And that color is awesome. I mean, what a fun color. Yeah, the clasp is not amazing, but it does have four micro adjusts and it's simple. It's, you know, I think we've gotten to the point now where we're like kind of spoiled with some of the like Zelos clasp and the Seaward clasp and I mean heck even this notice clasp is smooth but you only have three micro adjust but I do like that simplicity of that but we still have a lot of brands using the traditional micro brand style clasp you know fold over this one's got five micro adjust and yeah, it might start to make the watches feel a little bit cheaper, but see, like I can tell this MMI, this is not made, I 
don't think is made in the same factory. This I don't know where these come from, but the like just the specking the bracelet. I would rather them spec if this was made in the same factory as like where the notice is at. I would rather have that H link on here. You know, this is a an H link as well, but see the way they did it, and it just I don't know, it doesn't feel as nice as the notice one. Oh, this clasp, check this one out. I like the tsunami clasp. This is really clean and smooth, and this is a prototype, so but there's no micro adjust. They have a dive extension, so hopefully they, you know, I'll have to talk to them. I don't know if they're going to do some sort of micro adjust on these or not, but this is a pretty cool watch too. Awesome. I'm put the bracelet on backwards. Peter, do people actually notice the difference between low and high beam movements? I would typically say no. I mean, I have to like look at it for a minute to, I mean, I can tell the difference from a four hertz sweep, sweep to a um, three and a half, you know, three and a half. You can just see it, you know, like this one's more, um, more dramatic movements, whereas this one's a little less dramatic. Like if you focus on it, sure, you can see it, but you know, I don't know that most people, I don't, I've never seen anybody notice it. I mean, even like Hamilton's and a lot of Omegas and stuff like that, they're not four hertz, so. Yeah, I think this one is pretty cool. I like the colorway and they got some cool colorways too. This has got a sandwich dial. I really like that handset. Super legible, very easy. Nice 120 click. I don't know if that lines up. I kind of feel like this one might come from the factory, like where Helsin and Armida come from? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, the K-shape is unique too. It's very just flat. It has a little bit of a kick right there, but pretty flat. I really warmed up to this guy too. Excellent taper on the bracelet. Detroit said he heard I'm turning my channel into Shinola only. No, I don't think I'm going to buy any Shinolas. I have the one, I have the Burton, and then I have your. This is actually Detroit Spartans Shinola on the right, which I'll probably just get back to you. I haven't been wearing it. I haven't been wearing any of this stuff. But I do like Shinola, but I don't see me buying one in the future anytime soon. Let's see. Design says he's thinking of making his own dive watch. Suggestions on something you want to see on a dive watch. I am the wrong person to ask to try to design a watch. I'm more of a, if you design something and then want some uh, feedback on it or something like that, I've done that for uh, quite a few companies. But yeah, does Detroit, this Oris is actually really cool. For a Diver 65, it's one of the coolest ones I've seen. Need to do a video on it. Hey, Amon, thanks for chiming in. Yeah, the Diver 65 is a weird watch. It, like, it doesn't feel like I don't know how to say this without sounding bad. It's gonna sound bad, but 
The Diver 65 feels fragile to me. It's like one of the only dive watches that I handle that actually feels like I'm just going to break it. It feels fragile just in handling it. But they're so dang cool. They're like the perfect size. Is my focus fading in and out? Is there even any focus? <laughs> yeah, it definitely feels vintage. You know, a lot of watches will like look vintage but feel like modern. This one like looks and feels vintage. It feels fragile to me. I'm sure it's not. It's probably fine, but... Yeah, this is the leather strap it came on, and it, it is like one of the best leather straps I have handled. It is awesome. I love the taper on it. I love the texture on it. Probably smells great. Yep, smells great. But not a micro brand. Uh, Randy is asking, do I still have any Casio Pro Tracks? I do not. I was looking at them the other day, though. Yeah, I just, I don't have any right now. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to go pro track hunting. I'm kind of broke right now. I'm tapped out on money. Peter saying BGW9 or C3X1. Are you asking what my preference is? My preference in between those two loom would be the uh, C3X1. What is on this? I don't know. It is not, it's definitely not C3X1. It's not bright, bright, but it is decently bright. Uh, let's see. What is a good first diver under a thousand bucks? Almost any of these micro brands. Um, you, that's up to you to pick. Like, actually, I need to talk to. Max. So I got a buddy, Max, that is working on a website that is going to be a game changer when people are looking for stuff like that. Because the website, basically, you're going to be able to put in that criteria. You're going to be like, I want a 40 millimeter diver, say like 40, 41 millimeter diver. I want it to be a thousand dollars or less. And I want white ones or whatever. Like you can select all that criteria and it'll bring up all of the divers that meet that criteria in a chronological list. So the website is going to be crazy. Let's see here. When the website gets launched, I'll roll it out to you guys too. I'll show it to you. Doxa 200. Yeah, those are fine. I feel like they're a little small, but... Yeah, that, Peter, that website is going to be, it's going to take a while to complete it, to like completely grow, because there's just, I mean, look at my channel. I can post up a watch video essentially every day, and I'm never going to run out. So there's an infinite amount of watches essentially. So that website, there's no way you're going to be able to have like all of the watches on there, but he's going to try to start with like most of the micro brands first and then expand from there. Yeah, there, there is. He's been working on it for like a year and a half. Like that's 100% all he's been doing. Like more than a full-time job, that's all he's been doing is building this platform. So like I said, it, it, it needs to work. So regardless of whether it's uh, perfect from its, you know, when it launches, but it'll be an evolution and it is going to be legit game changer for a lot of people like because people ask me questions like that stuff all the time yeah it's it's an amazing idea when he first presented it to me like probably eight, eight nine months ago i was like holy crap i cannot believe that doesn't exist you know there's so many different like when you go looking for a watch you got to look at different youtube channels you got to look at different forums you got to look at different facebook groups you it's like and yes learning all this stuff is is great but you don't even know what you don't know so you might be missing a ton of watches then, yeah, escapement, all that is in there. Lug to lug is in there, uh, thickness, you know, movements, all of that information is in there. There's like, 
I forget, 20 or 30 different drop downs from different things that you can pick to, you know, narrow your search. Uh, I'm talking about a website that's hopefully going to come out. I don't know if it'll happen this year or early next year, but um, yeah, it's basically going to be it's going to start mostly with micro brand watches, but you can you can there's search criteria, so you can select like a different dial color, a different case material. Like say you want titanium, then you know. The, titanium yellow just put in that stupid stuff or something like that and it'll come up with whatever titanium yellow watches meet that so well it'll search any watch that he has entered into it but it'll grow over time like so it should have and it'll also hopefully archive as well over time and then it'll also eventually potentially do where like it'll link videos so like if i have a video for it or like design has a video for it or or dane has a video for it or something like that there'll be links to different youtube videos so somebody can like look up you know rze watches or whatever i want to look up rze endeavors it'll come up it'll have all the different colorways the price points all that stuff and then they'll have like links for videos and then potentially links to like where to buy it all that stuff it'll be pretty nuts I have no idea how to create something like that either, so it's super impressive. Yeah, JJ, you have to ask other questions. Uh, Kyler with a $5 super chat says, what is the best way to sell a watch? The best way to sell a watch? Um, price. That's the best way to sell a watch where and how and all that stuff so you need to format you need to be um you need to have good clear information you need to have uh lots of pictures good description and then and then select your media platform that you want to actually sell it whether it's reddit instagram facebook marketplace ebay uh yeah patreon groups discord groups all of that stuff but reality is, and I, I've had this discussion with so many people, and you can agree or disagree with me, but yeah, not eBay. I mean, a lot of people are saying avoid eBay, but I don't know. Depending on what watch you're talking about, eBay might be your best place to do it, depending on the watch. But if you're talking about a popular watch or a dive watch, then you should be able to sell it somewhere else. Um. JJ says under 300 is fine, but I don't know. I think if you're selling for under 300, you could probably do it on Facebook Marketplace even. So, yeah, it's ridiculous. But so, I mean, essentially what you want to do is, you know, whatever, pick a watch. So if you're just going to sell this notice, for example, you're going to do, um, you, you need to do a little bit of homework on it. See how much they are new. Are they still even available? And then how much are they, you know, if you can find anybody with listings, whether it's on eBay or Watch You, um, not Watch You Seek. Well, Watch You Seek is one if you have an account there. I don't really have an account there. But if you go to Watch Recon, so watchrecon.com, well, and then you can go there and it'll search multiple places. So, you know, or Chrono24. But if you go to Watch Recon, if it's a micro brand and stuff like that, you'll probably find some listings so you might find them they might pop up on reddit or watch you seek or wherever they're pulling their info from but you might see what they're listed for potentially maybe even sold for on reddit some of the reddit listings and then if you look on ebay it's fine to look on ebay for watches and see what they're listed for but a listed watch is not a good gauge to judge your price a sold watch is a good gauge to judge your price. So go on eBay, look at sold watches. You want to find out what people have actually sold the watch for. And then what I usually do is I go lower than that. And then the watch sells right away. Yeah, 
And then Jonathan says you pack it all up really good. Um, yeah. And if it's a digital watch, set the alarm on it. I cannot remember the last time I've sold a watch on eBay. Yeah, just just be a good seller too. Be a good, you know, package it properly, ship it fast, you know, communicate with the buyer. But yeah, I mean, price sells watches, honestly, I think. You have to think about your, your time, you know, whatever price point you're hitting. Say you have a $300 watch that, you know, other people are trying to sell for $300. You know, find a couple of places to list it. List it for two fifty. Does that fifty dollars really matter that much to you? Is that really gonna break you that fifty bucks? You know, list it for two fifty, and I bet you it sells instantly. And then you can ship it instantly, and then you can move on, and you can go do the next thing. Yeah, Dane doesn't like to hear this. Dane hates to hear this, but this is how I've done it. This is how I've bought and sold so many watches. You have to turn your care off, and when you're done and you're ready to sell a watch, sell it. Don't list it for sale. Sell it. There's a difference between putting a watch for sale and selling a watch. Yeah, Floridian 100%. Like, so there's a notice Facebook group. So if you're selling a notice, go to that notice Facebook group. If you're selling a Zelos, go to that Zelos Facebook group. Yeah, Bean Boy, 100%. Time is money, the quicker the sale. The other thing I think a lot of people don't really care for is when you list, um, I don't want to pick on a particular watch, but like, say you list, I don't know how much Heinrichs go for, but say you list the Heinrich in... I'm just arbitrarily picking a number, but say like other people are trying to sell for 500 and so you're like, well, I'm going to list mine for 500 because that's the market price. Everyone's got them listed for 500. Um, well, no, everybody has them listed for 500. No one's selling them at 500. So you're like, oh shoot, it didn't sell. It's been over a week. All right, I'm going to lower it down to 490. You lowered it 10 bucks. Guess what? No one's still going to buy it. Another week goes by. Now you lower it to 480. Guess what? You keep doing that and then people are just going to wait because they're, they're like, he's going to hit that magic number. Or you could just start with that magic number of 450 and just sell the darn thing. That's my thoughts on it. It might be wrong. It might be good. I don't know. Simcon says go the other way. It, keep increasing the price. And then people will be like, wait a minute, what am I missing here? Um, I've done that before, but only to... Only to, like, get rid of the buyer. I didn't want to deal with the buyer. Like, the buyer was being difficult, more difficult than I wanted to deal with or something. So then I would actually raise the price, and they would go like, wait a minute, well, I'll take it at the other price. No, nah, no, nah, it's the new price. So, but you have to have something, you know, a reason or something that's worth raising the price to go above market. There's not a lot of micro brands that you're going to go above market on. It happens though. Sometimes they hold their value or go up. It does happen. Steve says, what's up, everybody? Hope it all is well. Started his new job today. Congratulations uh, on jet engines. He's working on jet engines. Decided to wear his trusted G-Shock Square. Perfect choice. I agree. Hopefully it was a purple one like this. I think all of your new co-workers will really appreciate that. Or maybe you wore a Bling Master to work on those jets. Hopefully it was something like that. That'd be pretty cool and fun. Or you could... Wear two bling masters. You could wear two bling masters. And maybe the pink rose gold one. You could wear... Well, you only have two rest. I don't think you can wear all three of them. Uh, 
Let's see, can I put the rose gold and purple side by side? Sure, I can do that. There they are. I need to do the videos on these soon. So. Let's see, what does Jason say? That new Mecca Titanium Square t to be released. As soon as that, Jason, as soon as that one comes out, I'm gonna pick it up. I don't, I don't have the money, but I'm gonna do it regardless. Because it's too freaking cool and I want to see it. Is it really rose gold? No, it's really like pink. None of these are real gold. Hey, Hector's here. Wilson likes the purple. I can hook you up, Wilson. I've worn it one day, so it's used. So now I'm going to take that flipper tax on. I'm going to sell it cheap. I just need to do the video on it first. It's cool, but I don't see myself wearing it. Simple Human says the real gold one goes for 130k. Ah, man, I really hope one day I can actually see that. Watch, see one of those. Yeah, Dane. Yeah, it's really cool, but I don't know if I'd wear it. But, you know, if you're a hardcore collector, then I think that would be cool to have. Detroit says he knows somebody that had one but sold it. <sighs> Sucks. I need to network and meet more people because guaranteed somebody out there has one that would probably let me check it out. I just have to fly in and meet up with them or something like that. And if they have that, they probably have a ton of other really cool watches. And eventually, at some point, that is one of my goals. Um, you know, I would love to, you know, get the silly play button from YouTube, you know, hit that uh, 100K mark. But more so, off that I would, one of my goals would be to end up traveling more in a year and do some, like, on-site anonymous, potentially, because the way I video watches, even for collections, People aren't going to know, they, they could potentially not know who the person is, where it's at, or anything like that. I can keep all that stuff completely anonymous, and I can just share the complete collection. And the, the owner gets to have that archived, you know, out there in the YouTube world, and, and then we get to share it with the community. So there's some amazing collections out there, whether it's, you know, super high-end collections that are way outside my league, and I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Or it could be collections like what, uh, you know, um, my buddy Manny, who may be still in the chat, like his collection. Or, um, you know, I could, next time I'm down in Florida, if Dane's up for it, I could do his collection in its entirety. Uh, you know, I could do Ch Josh from uh, Horology Insanity. Like, his collection is ridiculous. So I would love to do, like, full-on on-site collection videos. I would love to do that. Yeah, so Dane's like, he's going to exclude a few. That would be, that's fine. I, I could show them and like blur them out like they're in the witness relocation program or something. Like completely blur them out so you can't tell what they are. Be like, I can't show you these. That'd be kind of fun. Jason's still trying to get me down to Aruba. Yep, I knew it. I still have your, uh, you can kind of see it right there. Where's my, where's my pointer thing? Oh, there it is. There's the, uh, right back here is the Aruba uh, postcard. Wilson says his would be a short review. <laughs> Thoughts on the Seiko Speed Timer? Is that the, the new release? I think they're cool looking, man. Simcom, don't do it, man. Uh, 
Simple Human says, why most watch channels on YouTube talk only high-end watches? There should be more channels like yours show. There's a ton of channels out there that are more focused on these more affordable brands. Um, and they're done at all different levels too. Some of them are super high production. Like I was even talking, like I said, I was talking about, well, I guess he does some higher end stuff too. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's so many watch channels out there. It's there, And then again, there's probably a bunch more that are really good that I don't even know about. Richard, what is the light blue on this one here? I know that dial is stunning, isn't it? It's a second hour gin clear diver. So they've been turning out some pretty cool watches. I believe they're out of Australia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, when I do the full video on this one, because I haven't done the blue one, when I do the full video on it and I do some close-ups on it, it is like very, very cool looking. And excellent bezel action. Nice bracelet, H-Link, very much like the Notice. It's very soft-like feeling. Cool case back. It, it kind of reminds me about the size of the Seamaster 300 was. Oh, okay, they're in Melbourne. Yeah, so it's like 42 millimeter case, basically. Bezel's a little bit wider, but and about 49 lug to lug. Just over 13 thick. There's, most Seiko divers are like 13 and a half. So this looks like it's a bigger, thicker watch, but it's just not. It wears great. William Carey wants to get some G-Shocks and go to the London Watch Show next year. That's a great feeling watch. And that blue is just great. You get some awesome colors. Like the microbrand world can respond to like making really cool colored dials very quickly. Uh, Willard on the right. I didn't really show this. This is a, a Detroit Mint. And it's, you know, green on green. This is the owner of the company's watch. I met up with him while I was down in southeast Michigan. And I was like, hey that's one of the the really cool Willards or whatever that you're wearing. He's like, he took it off his wrist and handed it to me. He's like, here, take it. And I've been trying to get a hold of him to get it back to him because it's his watch. Um, and I haven't been able to get a hold of him. So uh, hopefully next time I go down there, I can meet up with him and get his watch back to him. But yeah, it's a, it's a cool watch. The only reason I didn't really put it straight up on the table is because it's, um, you know, more of a... Dane, thank you for the two-minute warning. It's, you know, it's not a, these are all pretty much unique designs other than the uh, Borealis Adraga is a little play on a, a established model. But these Detroit Mints are nice. Similar to the Steel Dive. Yeah, yeah. I'm biased towards the uh, Detroit Mint just because he's in Michigan and he's a single owner, you know, just, you know. The parts probably all come from the same place, but the uh, the company, the, the final money ends up with a local guy, so. Let's see. Light him up. I will kill the lights here in a minute. Any z on the table? No. Richard, uh, Dane just, yeah, I, I just sent it to Dane. I actually just dropped it in the post office today. I didn't know I was going to do this. Will I be getting the Apple Watch? No, I've had my run with Apple Watch. I honestly didn't know I was going to do this micro brand thing. So, um, I think it's 9 o'clock. So when I, uh, after I watched that video today from Peters, uh, the, the Dane, or who was it? Detroit, this was 600 bucks. So I'll sell it for a lot cheaper than that. But if you want to check it out, I, I'll send it to you or something. But I just need to video it first. Uh, let me kill the lights because it's already been an hour. And... Floridians having Rolex withdrawals. Me too, man. It's been a struggle trying to wear other watches. 
I want, I want to wear this one. So, but I've been trying to wear some other ones. All right, let's kill the lights and check the loom. Because this is another thing that microbrains do very well. They do loom better than the big boys do. Straight up, microbrands own the loom department. That's almost a reason in itself to buy microbrand that nobody really talks about at great length. That is amazing. Look at that. Spectacular. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.